I quite fancy doing some videos about um, electronic music synthesis and the whole studio kind of thing. Uh, I've sort of got a perspective on it and uh, no idea where to start. But I got this Wasp synth um, a few months ago. Um, and last night was the first longish session I've, I've played with it and it got me thinking that one of the notable things about a lot of what I've seen with people with modular synth synthesizers is that they underestimate what you can do with the most basic tools. This isn't modular by any means, it's kind of pretty much preset it's two you've got two it's a it's a voice it's one voice in a relatively fixed manner uh, with two oscillators a, a low frequency oscillator a filter two envelopes with vcas and uh, well one of the envelopes is going to the filter and that's about it really very minimal very old-fashioned um, this was the wasp itself was designed well it was released in 1979 I believe um, uh, this is a Behringer modern modern clone without the terrible keyboard but it's got MIDI in so it's brilliant and it was very inexpensive it cost dirt cheap comparable to a single rack mount module and it's wonderful so anyway my point is that thinking about how to say well people overlook what you can do with the most basic kit and uh, so I was thinking well what can you what can you emulate with these things ah thinking back oh drums so probably like a bass drum sound so you've got a thud uh, a bit of noise envelope some low signish oscillator I mean this is this has suddenly got triangle square and some enhanced whatever oscillators on it but with a, with putting a, a filter on it then it's you can get a bass drum sound out of that I'm sure snare mm, not really snare complex enough but thinking along those lines I was thinking well you know there's like the drum synths classic drum synth TR-808 and I know the TR-808 um, Caroline had one and uh, loved it the user interface was brilliant because you could just go tap 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 dum 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 lovely and the sounds were nothing like real drum sounds that was the beauty of it and I thought well hang on now can you I could I do um, emulate the sounds of the TR-808 on the Wasp synth I don't see why not and I had a look earlier and for some reason my memory had me that the um, cowbell sound was a complex sound and I looked around and like, listened to it, and it actually isn't. Um, I've recorded, well, no, I downloaded a sample. Downloaded a sample that goes like. Uh, solo you. That. And if you happen to be in the clubs, I don't know, early 80s. That sound was so bad. And it's probably due to a lot of the chemicals that were knocking around at the time that I imagine it being complex. And it isn't. Um, I had a look around and somebody's done a nice analysis of the um, the circuit and what it, and it's um, really crude circuit. 
It's two square raised oscillators that are built around Schmidt triggers, which is like the cheapest way of making a square wave oscillator. With arbitrary pitches, one's at 800 hertz, according to this guy, and others at 540 hertz. Um, on that, well, hmm, varies, but the, the circuit's so crude, um, you know, give or take a couple hundred hertz there. Um, those two oscillators going through a, a VCA with a little bit of an envelope on a VCA and then to a bandpass filter. So it's just got two oscillators, two square wave oscillators. The WASP's got two square wave oscillators. So I had a look on here for what um, MIDI pitch, well, keyboard MIDI pitch corresponded to the frequencies he was talking about. And you can't, this is monophonic, very strictly monophonic, but you can um, change the distance between the two oscillators. Um, the 540 hertz is in the region of C5 on the keyboard. And uh, the next one up, oh, it's behind me, but I can't be bothered looking, is a bit higher. And so, okay, put square wave oscillators on. I had to fiddle around a lot, and I don't think I can quite get that the same um, pitch difference with the two oscillators on here. I had a little fiddle. The, there is uh, a pitch knob here that will change the pitch of the second oscillator relative to the first one. Um, but the distance I don't think is quite as great as you get on the on the 540 to 800, whatever it was. Um, but, you know, near enough. Uh, and then bandpass filter. Yeah, it's, yeah, it can do that. It's got a nice filter on it. Um, then, like, how would you go about, once I've got these two, I can kind of put it on paper, two oscillators, two square wave oscillators, bandpass filter, envelope, blip. Um, well, look at the, the frequency domain. It's probably a good idea. And so with this, uh, is which one have I got showing now? Is that visible? Is that remotely visible? Yeah, just about. Um, it's got a peak below 500 hertz actually, then quite a steep one at 500 ish, and then one somewhere a bit above it, and then that kind of roll off with the harmonics. Um, what I've got on the computer um, is just a, a generic door. I run Linux and it seems like that Reaper is the best bet, even though you've got to pay 75 euros or whatever for it. Reaper seems to be the best bet for a door on Linux. And uh, so that's what I'm running, but it's a generic door. And got that playing that single note out of MIDI to the Wasp and that as best as I could get it looks like uh, mute that one solo solo okay and you know the pitch Pitch difference, I think, is the main thing that's a bit out there. The filter. Oh, uh, and I've got... Uh, popping up a... If you compare and contrast... If you can see that... Same kind of thing with a, a big P. 
peak in between two smaller peaks. And so a bit of variation there that's possible. Uh, then like the basic frequency. Um, and the filter of course, the frequency in Q makes quite a difference. Basically it. Now a listening test. Oops. Some other shite. Um listening test. It was very similar, except there's a bit of phase shifting going on there in the in the square wave, somehow it's it's it sounds like there's a bit of sh phase shifting going with the envelope. And I've looked at the circuit, and I can't see how that's coming in. But the circuit is so crude, you know, it's the kind of circuit that you would have kind of side effects that are a bit random anyway, and they just happen to serendipitously make this kind of interesting noise with that. But I was able to get something quite similar um, with oops, there we go again. Uh, with you know, you hear that? That's that's a, that's a bit drier. The not drier really. The without any kind of phase shifting. The phase shifting that's there. Uh, reminded me most of the flanger, so I'd stick a flanger on it. And, uh... well, it's not quite there, but do you see what I mean? That there's that kind of a phase shifting going on with it. The flanger's got its own little cycle. I'm fairly sure it's a, an artifact of the envelope generator making that. Or it could be just the recording on the sample that I'm, I'm trying to emulate. Uh, so, in theory at least, I would say that you could emulate every sound on the TR-808 on a synth like a wasp um, should you, I might do it actually, might try and get every sound that's on the TR-808 um, and if you've got a computer you can do the sequencing um, the recent versions of the hydrogen drum machine I found a bit unreliable so I'd probably just have to do that in Reaper as well. Like I don't, I'm not really. I've only had Reaper a few weeks, so I'm not really sure how best you do drum edit on it. Whether there's something that looks like an 808, might be a plugin that looks like an 808. Um, and so, well, one one little final com comparison between what I got and the uh, what's original ish. Uh, here's the original ish. Oops. And that's the pitch is different, but I think the timbre is pretty similar. And um, just for a final comparison. This is a real cowbell.